Hello, everybody. It is Wednesday Night Live, and here I am with my latest hat creation. I just took it off Lady Marion, who's behind me. I'll give it back to her in just a minute. But um, so uh, this was fun. I um, went out to Hobby Lobby today to look for supplies to make a hat to match uh, Tammy Anderson's uh, really pretty blue outfit. If you haven't seen it, I will show it to you, but I had a lot of fun creating this Edwardian hat to go with it. So it's got the beautiful, the requisite ostrich feathers, the pretty flowers. I um, didn't cover all the straw of the hat because I wanted to break up the blue because the dress has so much blue. Um, it has some gold embroidery, so I thought the, the straw of the hat was gold, so I wanted to add a little bit of uh, another color because it's very monochrome. It's beautiful, and she can wear it with a white blouse as well. But um, I just posted pictures of Lady Marion, and now I will show you the whole outfit if you haven't already seen it. So here we go. So um, I posted pictures a few minutes ago of Lady Marion. I posted pictures of um, the outfit itself earlier uh, in the week, but I didn't have the hat made until today. So this is another, another, <laughs> I've done several here. I'll lower this down so hopefully you can see it better. Um, another turn of the century. This is circa 1900 outfit. Here, let me scoot this over a little bit this way so maybe you can see the outfit and me at the same time, <laughs> at least part of me. Um, so I've been doing a, a number of these. This is my third or fourth one. Um, the first one I did was um, a white blouse with a um, blue skirt that was a similar color to this. It was a, a lighter blue. Um, it was a little bit of a flocked taffeta skirt. I did the same kind of belt, you know, the corselet belt. Um, and I made a white blouse with that one and a white hat. And then the second one I made uh, was also the same era, the turn of the century which is uh, characterized by the high neck blouse, um, the long sleeves. Um, this is referred to as a shirt waist, the little, the poofy, the poofy kind of blouse, the pigeon breasted blouse. Um, the skirts are uh, very round and full at the bottom, fitted in the hips. Uh, they are worn with a bum pad. Um, again, that helps to create that correct silhouette, the, the pigeon breast in the front and then, um, you know, the booty. Um, let's see, so they're one with a small bum pad. Uh, let's see, what else can I tell you? Um, and a corset, of course, the mannequin's not wearing a corset. So um, I did the first one, then I did the tartan outfit last week for myself, and that was also a um, skirt and jacket, but I did an evening bodice with that one as well, and I wore it for my live feed. So if you didn't tune in last week, um, you can go back to uh, my timeline and you can find it. I was wearing the evening version of that dress and that was a lot of fun. Um, and so um, after I did those two, I got several requests uh, for outfits like this. So I do have, this was a commission for um, Tammy Burton Anderson and uh, we're both really happy with how it turned out. It's really pretty. Uh, let's see, and then I'm going to be doing one for Holly Bush. Uh, she's another author. And let me see, does anyone else want one of these? I think I had one more person, but I can't. Oh, a couple more people, I think, want something similar to this. Uh, Patricia Denke. Um, I think we're going to be doing something, a, a similar style. She doesn't like the high neck, so uh, it might be a little bit later Edwardian. But this is considered um, Gibson Girl era or early Edwardian. Um, I'm not sure what year the Edwardian period started. I, I'm thinking it was 1901. Does anybody know the year Queen Victoria died? So it was around that, around that time anyway, the turn of the century. So I really, really like these, and I love the big hats, the big, um, really pretty hats with the, you know, with the tulle and the flowers and the feathers, and they're great hats, very feminine. Um, 
So I'm having a lot of fun with these, and I would like to do some more um, of this era, and I'd also like to turn the clock back just maybe 20 years and do a couple of natural form dresses. Those were popular only for a short period of time. That was the bustle period that wasn't a bustle. It fell, it was the natural form period that only lasted five or six years that women didn't wear bustles. They still wore a little bum pad, but not the big bustle. And that's where the dresses were very fitted in the hips and they had very elaborate trains. Um, that was in the late um, 1870s to maybe 1883. So like 1876, 77 to 1883, that, that period more or less is the natural form period. So I'm hoping to do one of those and I want to do also a, a dress that's all lace. And I haven't done that yet either. So. Let me just look at some of your comments. So, hey, Catherine. Hey, Cheryl. Hey, Tina. Hey, Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, and Charlotte, um, uh, skinny ladies back then. Uh, Charlotte, this mannequin's really skinny. But actually, um, if you think the ladies were thin, that is not it at all. Uh, they actually were... Uh, on the average, at least the dresses ran larger than than is currently popular in our time. Um, big hips were very popular, and part of the reason the waist looks so small is because of the way that the fashions the fashions were designed to create a a um, illusion of a very small waist. The the corsets, the padding in the bosom, the padding in the butt, it all made the waist look smaller. So um, a full figure was actually very popular, very in style. So um, let's see. Oh, uh, <laughs> Charlotte, you wish we could go back to those types of dresses. I do too. That's why I'm making them and I want to wear them. <laughs> so um, I had an opportunity to play dress up last week, but I didn't go. Um, the big Jane Austen festival in Louisville I had talked about it for a couple months, but I couldn't find anyone to go with, so I canceled. I really had wanted to go to that. Um, but today, I just found out about something really cool that's happening close to home for me. Um, in January, January 30th to February 3rd, there is a big celebration in Camden, South Carolina. Camden is a very historical town. It was very prominent in the Revolutionary War. It's one of the oldest cities in the United States, certainly in the South, um, small city, but very historic. Um, and they have a, what was it, the Treaty, I think it was Treaty of Ghent celebration, which I don't know anything about. It's, um, it was in 1815, and I just heard about it today from um, a, uh, a historical pattern maker who um, lives in that area, and she lives in Sumter, South Carolina. Maybe you guys have heard of Sumter, too. That was a famous battle uh, battle place. Um, but anyway, um, last year they had uh, a whole weekend uh, to celebrate this, this treaty. They had historical talks. They had um, teas. They, I mean, they did, you know, historical clothing. They had a big ball with illuminations. So anyway, I've got it marked on my calendar. I definitely am gonna go this year. And I really, again, I don't wanna go by myself. So it's January 30th to February 3rd in Camden, South Carolina. If anybody has any interest in doing that, the dress is 1815, which is Regency, or here it would be considered the Federalist period in the United States history. But um, the Regency corresponds, or the Federalist era corresponds with the late Regency era. So if anybody's interested in that, it would be really fun to get a little group together and um, and go learn some about the history. Um, this um, pattern maker I told you about, she did a talk um, last year um, on historical clothing. So I think she's gonna be doing that again. And there are some other people um, last year, they did something about the influence of Napoleon on American fashion. So it, it's something that definitely interests me, and I think it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, so anyway, uh, that's one of the things. And if you guys hear of other historical things, you know, let me know about them, because uh, I, I would like to start doing more of it. And I ideally, I would love to have a group of people 
I've heard of these around the country, little, little groups of people who get together, just small groups, you are not talking about a conference or anything, but small groups of people who get together and have teas and just do different historical outings and they do it in costume and it's just fun, like a little time traveler society. You know, I would love to start something like that and I don't mind traveling a little bit if it was like once every couple of months, you know, I, I would drive a, a few hours, you know, to, to do a weekend thing. Uh, there are a lot of places to go, a lot of things to see. There's another place in South Carolina. It's an old um, plantation. It's right outside Charleston. It's called Middleton Place. And um, it's a plantation from the 17, uh, from the, I think it was built in the late 17th, early 18th century. So it's before the, way before the Civil War. Uh, it was one of the earlier plantations. And it's one that didn't get burned by Sherman. Um, it was used in the movie The Patriot. It's called Middleton Place, just outside of Charleston. And um, they have a hotel there. Um, I went there many years ago. I've never been back. I went there oh, 15 or 20 years ago. So I'd like to go back, and I thought it would be really cool to, if the, a group wanted to get together and you know stay at the hotel there and go and tour Charleston, because Charleston's not far at all. The plantations on the Ashley River. Charleston's a beautiful, fabulous place to visit if you have never been. So, you know, I'd like to start doing this kind of thing with like-minded people who want to play dress up. You know, if you're in a little group, then it's not so weird, you know? You don't want to go out and do it by yourself. But if you're in a little group, you know, people just think, oh, that's a club, that's, you know, what are they doing? You know, it, it just, I think, garners interest. So anyway, would love to do that kind of thing if I could find some like-minded people to do it with me. So, hey, Carrie. Hi, Diane. Let me see. Are there any questions? Oh, thank you, Diane. Um, oh, the Barbie dress. <laughs> so last weekend, my little niece Hayden wanted to come over to my house. So um, she is turning eight this month. I can't believe how fast she's growing up. But um, we have kind of a special bond. And, um, of course, you know, she likes to play dress up too. And she's, she's just a lot of fun. She's a little, she's a little mischief maker, but I adore her. Um, so she, she loves her Barbies and, um, I can't remember what I was doing. Oh, I was making this dress. I had started this dress, uh, for Tammy and she asked if I would make something for her Barbie. So I have never done a Barbie dress. So I just kind of threw it together. I thought, okay, I just did a circle skirt. I'll just do a little teeny tiny circle skirt. So I got the circle skirt done and it's like, okay, all right, this is, this is working. Then I had to make a top. So I just found some scraps of fabric and made her a Barbie dress and it came out really cute. We were both happy. So uh, then I had to ask her, you know, how do I close this thing? She says, oh, they usually have Velcro. So I found some Velcro and I cut teeny, teeny, tiny little Velcro strips and sewed them into the Barbie dress. So it Velcro's closed in the back. So anyway, it was fun. Um, <clears throat> oh, thank you about my shirt. <laughs> yes, Tina, full figure was absolutely in fashion. So you would fit right in perfectly. Uh, hey, Grace. Uh, Charlotte, next year, I will need a dress. Well, Charlotte, um, PM me and we can chat about it because I do a lot of dresses. <laughs> uh, hey, Maria. Hey, Evelyn. Oh, I see a lot of new names tonight. Um, have you ever thought of joining the Red Hat Society? Uh, I don't really know much about that. I don't know if that's my thing or not. I'll, I'll have to check it out. Uh, Tina would love to go back to Charleston. Um, oh, Charleston's it's it's great, and the restaurants there. Oh my gosh, they have fabulous restaurants in Charleston. Um, but yeah, when we went, we went for our anniversary. It was probably about twenty years ago, and just loved it. Did the horse and carriage ride, which I always loved to do. But that was way before, way 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 before I ever got into um, costumes. So now I'd want to do it in a costume. <laughs> Hi, Ursula. So that's what I've been up to. Um, I'm also working on, this one is finished. I'm working on a commission that I got from uh, through Etsy. I do have an Etsy store. I don't really promote it very much and I only have a few things even listed. Um, I really haven't gotten a whole lot of business from Etsy, maybe five or six 
dress commission. So I'm probably going to close it down because I keep busy enough just from word of mouth, just friends of friends, you know, and people who know me through Facebook. Um, I keep pretty busy and I prefer to do business this way too because it's more personal. Um, if somebody wants a dress from me, I usually like to do a video chat, you know, once to talk about, you know, what they want and that way I can show patterns and materials and it's just, you know, it's, it's more personal and a little bit more fun to, you know, get to know people a little bit too, rather than just, you know, an order, you know, like, um, okay, for example, the dress I'm doing from Etsy, um, I emailed her and said, and she's in Australia, so I have to send it all the way to Australia. But I asked her, you know, do you have a corset and panniers for this Georgian dress? And she said, oh, she had ordered them, you know, from some other people. And I thought, you know, I can't say anything, but it just, it didn't make much sense to me because um, I try to do that if it's uh, panniers in particular. I like to have the person buy the ones that, because I build the dress over the, the panniers are part of this understructure of the dress. So the panniers determine the shape of the dress. And if I use one size and she uses a different size, the skirt might be too long or too short. It's not gonna hang the same way. And I found a way to, to um, take a uh, $30, $40 hoop skirt and use some safety pins and I can turn it into a grand pannier that if you wanna buy one on Etsy, it costs you two or $300. You know, I can do something that looks almost exactly the same for 30 bucks. So um, that's a little frustrating. So anyway, I hope the dress turns out. I'm using um, ones that, you know, work for me. And I just hope what she orders will, will work with the dress. So anyway, if you get a dress from me, I will always tell you um, where to go to get the right things at a good price um, for... Uh, the undergarments, the corsets and panniers. Some things I make, some things that are cheaper and easier to get on Amazon, but I always vet everything. If I recommend something, it's something that I've tried myself. Um, that, I, you know, it has my stamp of approval. <laughs> and because, you know, I want to save people money if I can. So anyway, um, I'm doing... Um, I'm doing that dress now. Some of you guys have seen pictures of it. I can... I can take my phone off the tripod now and uh, take you into my sewing room. The dress is still in pieces, so it doesn't look very impressive so far, but she was very specific about what she wanted. She wanted bronze taffeta, so the dress is bronze taffeta. Um, not my favorite of colors because it's really hard to work. It's a hard color to work with uh, as far as matching. Um, there's very, very little that, that goes with this. So um, when it comes to the trims, I'm having to, um, I found some lace that I think works well, but other than that, I just cannot find trims that go with this fabric. So I'm gonna have to do it all as, you know, self fabric trims, which is how they usually did it anyway. But, you know, I like to mix it up a little bit on my dresses, like the stomacher. I like to use something that has pretty embroidery or, or something, you know, and there's just, with this color, there's not a whole lot I can do. So anyway, this is the back of the dress. As I said, it's still in pieces. It's not all sewn together yet, but you can see that it's, you know, the sack style. And, you know, the waist will be coming in um, as I do it. And, I'll, and I'll, if I turn it around, it looks ugly right now because it's not finished. But, um, yeah, here's the part of the skirt I just had this pinned on. So here, let me take this off. It has, um, you know, the uh, underskirt or petticoat, which is what you can see here. And then um, the start of the bodice, the bodice is half made. And then this attaches in the back. Um, this, uh, the sack, the cape-like portion of the dress is attached to the bodice and it also is attached to the the overskirt so it is all one piece that goes on like a coat so um anyway this is always this is actually one of my favorite dresses to make i learned to make these fairly early on and um it's supposed to be this really really hard dress to make for me it's just not it's just really really intuitive um I don't know. I just guess I, 
I get it. I just get this dress. Um, I think I was a, a dressmaker in the Georgian times because I started this yesterday. Um, I didn't have a lot of time to work on it today. Worked on it maybe half the day, but it, it should be done by tomorrow. So I can do a sack dress in two to three days, um, depending on the amount of trim. If it's heavily trimmed, the trim can take a long time because you can make yards and yards of ruffles to go on one of these or whatever kind of trim you're putting on it. Um, oh, Tina, it does not look ugly. <laughs> well, it's not pretty yet. It will be pretty. I'm not saying it's going to be an ugly dress. It's going to be a pretty dress. But uh, it's, it's, it's at the um, awkward stage, shall we say, right now. Because uh, it is, you know, it is in pieces. But, um, oh, so what, Tina, what you said before about making the undergarments or telling your clients what to buy makes absolute sense because... Uh, because yes, then I know it'll fit perfectly. Exactly. Um, that's why I like to do it all together. Um, if I use a particular undergarment to make the dress, that's usually the one I recommend that the person buys. So it'll look right. And so I, I get concerned, uh, when people are getting things that I don't know what they are, you know, um, of course it, if it's not cut, right for the dress, maybe the corset's gonna show. So, you know, that that kind of thing happens. Um, so I try to use the same garments um, that the person's going to be wearing, or, you know, or I recommend that they get. So, um, oh, regarding trim for this dress, hold on, my, my hubby has a question for me. Oh, what is this? When did you, wh where'd Mom. you get this from? Mom. Oh, okay, so he just brought a picture in. This was, I don't know why he brought this in to me, but this was our engagement. This was my 18th birthday. And yes, I was drinking. Oh, wait, drinking was legal in Florida? No, it wasn't. <laughs> All right, my illegal drinking 18th birthday engagement party picture. <laughs> so your mom just gave that to you? Oh, okay. <laughs> so that's a, a flashback, you know. Let's see. Oh, my birthday's in September. I'll be 55. So how many years? Help me do the math here. Yeah, that was what? How many years ago? 36 now? 36? 30? 35? 30? I can't. Okay. I'm not doing the math. <laughs> I don't want to do the math. Okay, so back to this dress. <laughs> back to this dress. So um, I was having a hard time with the trim. And I did find something today, and I posted a picture because uh, what I what I was telling you all about the fabric being really really hard to match, it is. So originally when I started, I was going to use some of this. I only had one yard of this fabric, and it is a different color. I had one yard. This is embroidered silk, but I thought okay maybe that would work. You know, it's a little different shade but I think it would work. So I made this ruffle to put on the sleeve. And then when I put it on, I didn't like it. I just didn't think it looked right. Um, and I was gonna do the stomacher with this also. So then I thought, oh no, what am I gonna do now? I mean, this is a really hard color to work with. And it's not just the color, it's the sheen, it's the texture. This is very hard to match with anything. So then, I happen to think of something. Um, I have this gold lace. Uh, I bought several yards of it um, three years ago because uh, I ordered it online and it was gold lace and it turned out to be really, really dark. I thought it was a bright gold and it turned out to be like this brown gold and I've had it for three years. It never matched anything. I've gotten it out time and time again to try to use it. Uh, with something, and um, I'm looking for the sleeve now to show you, um, but it didn't match with anything. So yeah, here's here's the lace I'm talking about. So you see how dark this is? I mean, it just didn't work with anything, but guess what? So today, um, I after I did that sleeve that I wasn't happy with, I thought of this gold. And I put it with the bronze, and look what I got. I like it. I don't know if she'll like it or not. I had to, I had to email her a picture, and she's in Australia. So this is the new sleeve flounce that I made. 
um, and this is the sleeve. Of course, it's not on the dress yet. But I really, really like those together. What do you guys think? I think it works. So um, let me see if I can give you a better idea of how this is going to look. So basically, basically the sleeve will look like that. So what do you guys think? Um, Charlotte blue does not work <laughs> with this. I tried everything with this with this um, bronze. I did. I tried everything. Um, so anyway, this has been my, my challenge of the day. So I'm waiting to hear back. If I don't hear from her pretty soon, um, I might put the dress aside until I hear back and work on something else because I don't want to um, move forward with something she doesn't like. But I think the gold works with it. I really do. And I hope she likes it. So we will see. So um, I guess that's all I have to talk about tonight. Um, I made the hat. I made the dress. I've got some more commissions. I've got five or six more commissions to do. And I, I had mentioned I wanted to do something in lace. I wanted to do something natural form. Ooh, lace. Let me show you. I was talking about lace. I bought this lace on clearance. I'm going into my closet. Uh, I bought this lace on clearance at Hobby Lobby. And this is the lace that I want to make a dress out of. I will show it to you all. I love this. It's black and white. Isn't that beautiful? I tried it with a black background and I tried it with a white background, you know, under it. Um, I think I'm going to go with white. It because it really um, the pattern really stands out, but I love this um, lace and I think this would make a gorgeous tea gown. So I want to do this. Um, I was gonna wear uh, for the historical romance retreat. I was planning to wear that blue skirt and the white blouse and the and the white Edwardian hat, but to the tea to the afternoon tea, but if I can make a really beautiful um, dress out of this lace, this is what I want to wear. It kind of reminds me, what I have in my head, it reminds me of My Fair Lady. Do you remember? Now, this is white and black, but that really form-fitted white lace dress that she wore. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, Google Audrey Hepburn My Fair Lady white lace dress. <laughs> As it was fabulous with this uh and I want to do the ginormous hat um so I thought I could do a black and white ginormous hat again like what she did in My Fair Lady that really huge hat but the only problem is how do I travel with a hat like that I don't know how I could even get it to California so maybe the hat is out hmm. I've got to figure out how to bring my husband's top hat, too. So, um, Historical Romance Retreat is coming up soon. It's September 11th to the 15th. So, it's less than two months away now. And I have to figure out what I'm making and what I'm going to bring. I have part of it covered. But anyway, I might still do that blue and white outfit because I don't know where else to wear it. But I really want to do this lace dress. I really, really, really want to do it. And I have some other lace. Um... D, ship it to the hotel. I might have to do that. I thought about it, but I'm such a cheapskate. I hate to pay all this money to ship things because um, I know I'm going to have to pay for luggage too. And I'm going shopping when I'm out there. So I know I'm going to have to pay to ship stuff to me. <laughs> so, um, okay, some more lace. Um, I have two other lace um, fabrics that I really want to make something out of. I'm going to show them to you. Uh... This one is really cool. It's a like a blood red, um, really deep red. And it's got a little bit of glitter in it. And I just think this would be really beautiful as a dress. And then I've got one that's fuchsia and I've got a black, a really nice glittery black lace also. So I really wanna do something with these laces. I, I don't think I've done anything out of lace uh, yet. Um, actually, I just lied. I did make a lace dress uh, a couple months ago, uh, blue. I did blue lace for me. It was something I wore for our anniversary, but I haven't done anything historical in lace. So, um, 
anyway, that's something I hope to get done in the next couple weeks. I hope to do something with that black and white. I really like that. I think it could be really a cool dress. So um, I guess I am going to sign off now. And if anybody's interested in dress, you know what to do. Just PM me and I will be posting more stuff. And thank you so much for joining me tonight. I see a lot of new people. So um, thanks. I hope you had fun. And um, just drop me a note anytime you have any questions or comments. And I'm glad to see you all. Good night. Bye-bye.